I think with the rising price of oil and the financial collapse in the U.S. at the moment, I think globally we are reviewing. People are questioning the pattern of development that we have been following. Everyone knows that it is not sustainable, but the decision needs to be collective, and this is where we are. How do we get to the point that the decision can be collective? Uh -huh. But it requires both collective and individuals. Uh, I think the condition is that people want some alternative, and what alternatives is available? The only thing that I see available is this cross-national happiness philosophy and also the self-sufficiency economy of the Thai king. These are alternatives, but I think every culture would have to find its own adjustment, but there's a need for adjustment. The same pattern, the, the traditional pattern of uh, development is not sustainable, that's, that's recognized. And even the economies, top economies in the West, from England and the US, also recognize it, but they are looking for alternatives also. I think small and developing countries like Laos, I think, and in Bhutan, and even Thailand, should show the lead and be the lead in this area. I think, I think it can be done. I think the word ESD, Education for Sustainable Development, sums it all up because it shows the interdependency between education and sustainable development. Uh, the two are interdependent. If you have good education, only then you can get sustainable development. And sustainable development as being practiced is also a, a, a showcase for education. So the two are uh, helping and building on each other. So if you have good education and good development and it builds itself up, mm -hmm. it feeds us on each other, yes. Actually, uh, the young people are the victims of the media. And the young people are actually the potential agents of change. And the media penetrates every corner of our life. If you put the two together and bring out the positive side of each of these two components, I think they, the combined force can be very strong agents of change. Uh, there are a lot of good practices of sustainable development in the world and also within different countries develop or developing. Uh, the problem is that we are not linking the dots of these best practices. And digital technology I think, play, can play a very important role here. For example, uh, it can communicate or uh, demonstrate that a good practice in one place can be captured digitally and then replay and show in other places. And they can set up a network of these uh, best practices that they, the people, the local people, can actually uh, you know, record and do their own films and so that can be a system of sharing of information even without going through the, uh, the airway which is being monopolized. So the people can share the CDs and the DVDs, for example. The DVD players are available quite cheaply, quite affordable. And most people can know, they do know how to use it. And therefore, the conditions are right, except that the educators and the development people are not using these tools as well as the entertainers and the commercial people who are making millions or billions of dollars out of entertainment and, 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 and uh, uh, business promotion. 
we, the educators and development workers, should learn how to use these tools at the moment we are being used by these tools instead of the other way around. People would not be given only one set of information. Uh, with digital technology readily available at affordable price, I think people can look at examples from different places and that's the, like a database for them to tap on and select what's appropriate to them. And of course, technology is only a tool, but we need the people with the ability to screen the information for the most appropriate and use it wisely. I think you need to go hand in hand. It's not a substitute of human beings, but it is a tool, a very important tool, and, and we should be using it for education and development. Young people should be more involved in creating the media and also disseminating the media, whether radio or television. I'm saying that because the media right now as it is, is a one-way communication tool. And it's literally a weapon of mass destruction. And it's available in every household. And therefore, we can turn this weapon of mass destruction as being used now to something very positive. If the kids are, you know, can, if the kids can regain, the new generation can regain uh, the airwaves and they take hold of what contents to be uh, disseminated out, I think they are the one who are the agent of change. We should give them this tool for change. Right now, the tool is being used not for change in the positive way, but for change for, I would say, more destructive because it promotes greed of consumption to the point that our Mother Earth cannot support and we continue to consume. And to tame this greed, I think if we make the young people realize that what is left from this generation's consumption would be available for the next generation and the new generation has to take greater participation in, and in uh, preventing the depletion of these resources. I think that will motivate them. And I think the young people are really the key and communication is the tool they should use and education is the channel or the structure that these young people can be part of and bring about education that's more for sustainable development. I have tried it out, giving uh, a video camera to illiterate young people in the very remote areas. With proper guidance and coaching, I can see that they can ca become camera literate very quickly. And when, once they know what the camera can do, they get so motivated, and only not them, but the whole community participated. So it becomes like a big festival. And when they see the thing capture and replay, and the, 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 the pride and, and, and happiness in their face is, is very rewarding. And I think we should continue to have the young people and the disadvantaged people uh, be their own stars rather than relying on Hollywood or Bollywood stars. It is possible. We have demonstrated. And also, we have uh, given small camera and a digital camera with uh, a DVD uh, movie feature on it. And let the teachers, and with the young people facilitating it, the teachers practice their best lessons. Uh, and with the best teaching style and, 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 and approach, they can share the, the DVDs of these, what we call, tutoring films for teachers. And the teachers are also so motivated. And you can go on the radio program also, you know, have young people uh, 
airing their own programs and with the young people wanting to hear the voice of their colleagues or their friends, they, they zoom in and, and listen to their friends and, and instead of listening songs and music that from far and from abroad. So it has been proven here in, in the Lao context that it can be done. The question is how do we do it systematically so that there will be integration, streamlining, so that it, you know, our, our strength would be more than the sum of uh, one and two. We should not wait for education for sustainable development to be given to us or managed by somebody from outside. We should start from within, from the own society. And individuals are very important. You, know, you start with yourself. If you say, okay, this is a sustainable lifestyle, you should not only expect others to practice, but you start with yourself. Uh -huh. Be the change you want to see, like Gandhi has said. And I think it's still very relevant. But to get young people to come to that point of making the decision of changing their behavior, I think you need very kind of stringent or, 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 or rigid initi initiation. And I do that initiation by taking the young people into the temple. Let the monk, the monk has been trained also to communicate to the young people. Let the monk talk to them of their interests. For example, the Lao kids want to know, does ghosts exist? Does heaven and hell really exist? Uh -huh. And the monk, the trained monk, will relate these issues to real life. You know, if, if you do bad things now, you will suffer in this life. It's not the next life. So that they make the connection between bad behavior and the uh, repercussion that they would get in this life. So that would change their behavior, make them calmer and less being, less being driven than by the commercialization and the mass media. So they are more themselves, more self-confident. Basically, before you want to change others, you have to start changing yourself first. Mm -hmm.